Hey everyone, welcome to Marvel's YouTube channel. My name is Will Sliney and today we're going to draw through this picture of Iron Man. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and we'll have a little bit of fun doing it. Uh, this is all live, so feel free to ask me some questions in the chat because that's what this is all about. You know, the comic book community, it's a really, really cool one and it's really, really nice for us to be able to interact with you guys that are watching this all as well. So if you just want to join along, let's get straight into drawing this picture of Iron Man. So. First of all, a little bit about me. Well, um, I'm best known for my work on, I guess, Spider-Man comics and my Star Wars books. Uh, I've worked on Scarlet Spider. I've worked on Spider-Man 2099. I have worked on uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and most recently Star Wars The Rise of Kylo Ren. Uh, and I got to redesign some Iron Man costumes as well. When we worked on Secret Wars, I designed the Iron Man of the future. But today... Uh, let's get right in and let's draw this cool armor. So every time I'm doing a drawing, I'll always break it down into very, very simple steps. And the first thing I do always is I'll draw a little stick figure. And with that, um, basically, you know, I'll figure out my gesture. So let's start with something nice and simple, like an oval. And we'll figure out our little pose. We'll figure out where the shoulders are, where the hips are going to go. Uh, and then nice little simple lines for the arms. Little circles to indicate the elbows, the hands. We've got the legs with the knees. And of course the feet. Very, very simple, nice and quick to do. The cool thing about this being on YouTube as well is that if you want to draw along with this, you'll be able to watch it back at your own pace and to draw alongside it then too. Uh, of course, this will be up on Marvel's YouTube channel to rewatch afterwards too, if you don't want to just do it live. So if I'm going too fast, don't worry about that. You'll be able to watch it at your own speed too in the future too. So the next step that I do is I'll start blocking out the figure with the different shapes and making sure at this point to keep in as much gesture as I can. So let's start doing that, okay? So I'm working digitally. Uh, but if you're working on pencil and paper, that's cool too. These are all just tools to do your job. So you get the same result either way. It's whatever you're most comfortable with doing yourself. So, but it's nice here because I can show you this drawing in a cool, clear way. So let's start blocking out the figure, okay? We obviously have our head up the top. Let's start putting in the chest area. Building up that nice figure of Iron Man. Now the cool thing about the Iron Man armor is that it's quite organic in nature. So while I'm drawing something, you know, that's, you know, made out of metal or Iron Man or whatever it is that Tony Stark is building his stuff out of now, you know, it still is going to conform to the shapes of the figure. And that's essentially what I'm drawing here. I'm blocking out all of the parts of the human figure that I'm going to draw over. None of this will be in my final image. It's all to help me figure out where to draw the armor afterwards. So it's about completing what's underneath first. Now, a nice little tip. So I'm drawing little cylinders here for the arms, just like this, okay? So if you see a cylinder from the side, you turn it on its side like this, you know, just like a, a can of a fizzy drink or something like that. That's what we have here. But if you want to have your figure to have a little bit of dynamism, a bit of momentum, which is what we always want to do in comics, you need to show a little bit of movement in those cylinders, okay? So instead of just having straight cylinders like this for the arm, I'm going to add a little bit of a curve to them. And it's always nice when you're doing each little block of the figure to have those curves go in the same direction. So to show you that example, Let's start with a cylinder for the upper arm like this, with a little curve here. And the same for the lower arm here, with two curves again going the same direction. So if you look down here, when I did that, the legs, we've got two curves going this direction. And then for the lower part of the leg, two curves going in their same direction then too, okay? So all of these little tricks add some nice movement and direction. So, okay. So let's block out the figure a little more. Nice little simple shapes for the, the, the hands, the fingers. 
the thumbs again little cylinders are what we're using for these parts like this showing us where we're going to be drawing the different parts of the armors okay so there you go a nice simple first step Don't ever be afraid if you make steps or mistakes in these steps. Like the great thing about drawing, if you're drawing your pencil, if you're drawing your computer, if there's something that you don't like, never be afraid to erase it and redraw it too. That's the thing, that's the beauty about drawing is that, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be frustrated if the drawing isn't coming out the way that you want, it, want to do it. The more you practice these drawings, the better you do get at them. And we all make these mistakes when we're drawing. We'll constantly be redrawing these kind of stuff. Even at the likes of Marvel, when we're working on Marvel comic books, you know, we're working on a page. The first thing we draw isn't always the first thing that's going to end up on the page. We'll be practicing what we need to draw. We want to work. We want to improve our stuff all of the time. And we all make mistakes too. So don't let that frustrate you, okay? So keep the questions coming in. A few questions. You know, what have I worked on? So I, the most recent project that I worked on is Star Wars, The Rise of Kylo Ren, which was an awesome book to be a part of. Charles Soule was the writer. Um, it did really, really well. Um, this is the cover from it, actually, one of the most recent ones. Uh, and it told the story of how Ben Solo became Kylo Ren. Uh, before, I've been working on Star Wars now for like the last year and a half. But before that, I would have been inside in the Spider-Man office. So, especially with characters like Spider-Man, you want to have as much movement and dynamism in the little figures like this from here. And this essentially, you know, it's, it's all that I need for, to help me figure out where the different parts of the figure are going to go, okay? So I'm going to take this, I'm going to draw over this now on another layer. I can erase the stick figure that we had. When I'm working digitally, I can just bring down the opacity to lower it. If I'm working in pencil and paper, I can rub that out, okay? Next question, so what am I drawing on? Well, I'm drawing on a digital tablet, but again, the most important thing for you to know is it's just a tool. It's, it's, it doesn't help you in the end. It's, if you're working traditionally on pencil and paper, if you're working on computer, these are just tools to help you finish your art. It's whatever you're most comfortable with doing, that's the most important thing to use. You know, you don't have to switch from pencil and paper over to a tablet to be able to do your work at all. Okay, so as well as that setup, then I use a, uh, a program called Clip Studio, which is really, really good for comics. It's nice and simple as well. There's not too much stuff that gets in the way. And that's the important things about these tools too, is that you don't want them to, to get in the way of you actually sitting down and drawing, because that's the most important part. It does have some, my favorite thing though, to be fair about working digitally is that I can you know easily erase stuff that I don't like, or I can press the undo button, which is always handy. Um, it's just a little quicker for me that way for sure uh, but again you know if these are just tools these are just the things that you know you use to complete your final drawing so next step I'm gonna start getting into a little bit more detail start putting the pieces of Tony's armor on top of this this is the extremist armor uh, the last time I saw it drawn was when my good friend Valerio Schietti uh, in the to Tony Stark Iron Man series and I'm gonna draw over these layers that we have here uh, in order to, you know, figure out where the, the parts of the armor go. And again, like I was saying earlier, Tony's ar armor is quite organic, so it really fits the form of the muscles that are on the, uh, on the actual body, which is a quite handy thing for us because we're going to be drawing over that right now. Okay, so let's start adding in those shapes, okay? So a new layer... This isn't going to be my final image again. I'll be drawing over it again, but I'm using the anatomy to help figure out where the different parts of the costumes go. So we have the chest plate. Look how close it is to that underdrawing that we would have done. We've got these different chunks and shapes of armor that we're now drawing. These are what are called primary shapes, which are the big blocks of the armor. And we'll go in and draw the secondary shapes afterwards, which will be the little details that are on the armor. But we're still figuring things out here. And remember, don't be frustrated if you can't draw along at this speed. 
you know, I've drawn this before. I've been practicing it for this stream, of course, you know, and I've been drawing comics nonstop for Marvel for about seven or eight years. So, you know, draw it at your own pace and most importantly, have fun doing these drawings, okay? The shoulder pads are really important to Iron Man. They're nice, big and chunky. You know, it makes him look quite intimidating. The broader the character is, the stronger they can often look. Do I have any kind of formal training? Well, not too much, to be honest with you. The one thing that I always say about drawing is that the most important thing are the hours that you put in. I firmly believe that drawing isn't a skill that you're born, or isn't a talent that you're born with, it's a skill that you learn. And the more that you draw, the better you get. So whether you're in college to study art or whether you're at home working on your art, it's the people who put in the most hours get best, get, get better. And that's my favorite thing about it. You know, I love seeing portfolios at conventions that people bring up to me. And if I see a, a portfolio from someone one year and then the next year they'll bring along the same por a, a portfolio and you can really, really see the hours that have been put in, you know, they haven't magically gotten those skills. They've gotten those skills because they've been working really hard at their art and they're constantly practicing, you know, like if I saw a video like this on YouTube, I would have probably redrawn, you know, this image 10, 20 times to keep practicing it. And you're so lucky now you know, the amount of resources that are available are incredible. So, you know, the, the drawing world is opened up to everybody. Like I'm actually based in Ireland doing my work. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter who you are. All that matters is your art that you're able to draw. And if it's good enough, it'll get noticed. And I remember being told, you know, when I was working so, so hard at trying to learn how to become a comic book artist, I was practicing, I was drawing my comic book pages all the time. I remember being told by an artist, you know, that if you keep practicing, you will get there. And I really kept that to that motto uh, and I kept on working and trying to improve. So for every one of you that are listening to this right now, and I know it's a lot, uh, make sure that you keep on practicing, keep on improving and you will get there. I promise you. The comic book community is one of the nicest ones in the world. Like I remember walking into conven a convention by myself with a portfolio and every single artist that I met was so nice and they would they would offer to look at my pages and help me improve and give me little tips and advice. So if that's you, then please do keep doing it. So next question, how much input do artists have on st of the story or with a book? Well, it, it depends. Um, every book is different. You know, it depends on your relationship with the writer, your relationship with the editorial team. But every writer that I've worked with, you know, they're always open for you to give suggestions, which is cool. Like the perfect example would be the process that I went through on my last book, which was The Rise of Carlo Wren. You know, and uh, I've got a great relationship with Charles. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. And we were, this was actually, this was the first book that uh, I, it went from, you know, communicating over email to communicating on WhatsApp. And it was awesome. And as, as you know, the story was developing, you know, Charles was able to give me a buzz to talk about or even just little text messages. And it, it was just so cool to see the story develop. And of course, you know, I was designing characters. I was sending them back to Charles while Charles was doing the script. And it just grows organically from there. And I think that's like a really cool way to be doing comics, you know. And I remember even Peter David telling me the story of the original Spider-Man 2099 run when he was sitting next to Rick and Artie as he designed that Spider-Man 2099 costume. And, you know, he was sketching it up in front of him. And that's the cool thing that we can do now because the world is so much more connected is that we're going to be able to you know, stay, we can stay in touch an awful lot more and communicate more. And in terms of, you know, how much input do we have? Well, it's made it a much more of a collaborative process uh, and it's very, very enjoyable because of that. So I know I'm drawing a lot here. Ba I'm drawing these shapes over the key shapes that I drew before. That's the important thing here. The bit that I figured out earlier tells me where to put these pieces of armor. I have all of my reference in front of me that you can see of Tony Stark's armor. I know exactly what it looks like. I've done all of my research. Don't be afraid to have your reference, especially with something as you know, incredibly detailed as Tony's armor. Um, so I know what it looks like. So I'm applying these shapes on top of the building blocks that we created before. And then this layer here will in turn become a building block for when I'm actually starting to ink my piece. 
So, and we're going pretty quick, which is nice, so we'll get through a lot of that drawing. Which brings me to the next question, uh, is what's the key to drawing metallic surfaces? And, you know, what's cool about this Iron Man costume is I'm going to be able to show you that later on. So, keep on watching. And the last step of our drawing here is going to be adding in all of those reflections, shadows, and that's the thing. When you have a, a metallic surface, you know, if you were in the 3D art world, uh, there's a, a type of reflection, like it's a specular reflection, and, you know, you can really control the dial of how reflective something is by thinning down the reflection but brightening up the contrast of it. Of it. And with that, you know, we're going to add in a lot of lines to signify that here. Because that's what we're doing, really. We've got a 2D image here. And we're going to use all of these tricks to make it look like a fully formed 3D image. And one thing that really does that is light and shade, and no more so with something, you know, like, um, like a metallic surface. And this is cool. Keep on sending in the questions. I love it. Thank you very much. Next question. Do I find that the digital undo makes you too much of a perfectionist for your own tastes? That's a very good question. Um, and yeah, that can absolutely happen. You know, when you're, when you're working on digitally, you know, you might end up zooming in way too close and you're really, you know, working on these tiny details and then you'll zoom back out and you'll be like, oh, you know, I didn't need to do that. <laughs> I'm working too, too closely. I'm adding in extra stuff. That's one thing that you can find can be a struggle with digital. Undo, yeah, I absolutely might undo a bit much, but then at the same time, I'm less afraid to put pen to paper. So it's a kind of a trade-off. So, you know, if I'm drawing this line, you know, I'm not happy with it, I'll undo. I actually have it set to the a button on my pen, so it's quick and easy for me to press undo, and I can get rid of that line quite quickly. And as more and more people switch over to digital kinds of art, um, more and more of these kind of little tricks are, are being found by artists all around the place. And again, it's just a tool. It's totally fine to work on pencil and paper. Uh, but when you're using that tool, you know, use the things that you can use within it, you know, of course. So how much time do I spend on one comic? Okay, good question. So what you're seeing here, would I, be, would I draw Iron Man this fast on a comic book? Probably not, you know, I really want to get the whole face, the whole, the whole face, I'm drawing the face right now. <laughs> I want to get the whole thing done for you all watching um, within that hour period. So I would probably be a bit slower when I'm doing this. So don't think of this as the actual pace. However, you know, there is a nice rule of thumb for comics. The, the general rule of thumb is you, you work on a page a day. Uh, I'm known to be a little faster. I th think I, over, in the seven or eight years that I've been at Marvel, I've drawn more comics than anyone else, so speed is definitely one of my things. But a page a day is a good rule of thumbs. Some people are slower, some people are faster. You know, most important thing to have is when you have a relationship with your editor, you tell them how much you can do, and they'll know that of you. Um, they'll know exactly you know what your speed is and then they'll schedule it out for you like that okay so i i glossed over the head there really quickly i'm just going to show you a little method that i use for the head alongside this here okay so a lot of people use what's called the loomis method and i've actually been switching it up lately to a different method so the loomis method is you draw a line down the middle you draw a line in the center another two-thirds down then you've got the place for your eyes your nose and your mouth okay so I've start, I'm starting to more and more think like a sculptor, which means really thinking in the round uh, and really thinking of those planes that you have on the face. And I find that a little easier. And then there's no better planes on your face than the actual skull, okay? And this skull actually has a nice T like this. You know, it's easy to draw here because it's at the front of the face. Uh, and from that, you can get an awful lot of indications of different parts of the face. So we have the place for the eyes. You've got your mouth right here. You've got the sides of the plane of the face. You know, that's how I'll start drawing the face now. And this ties in perfect to Tony's armor. So with just with that T, with these cheekbones, you know where to put those lines for the armor, where to put the eyes like this, where to put the, those planar lines here, and 
boom, you're, you're away for Tony's armor, okay? Pressing the undo button. Keep those questions coming, this is awesome. And I hope you're all enjoying it so far. Okay, so what was the first Marvel comic I worked on? The first Marvel comic I worked on, it was so much fun. It was The Fearless Defenders uh, with Colin Bunn. It was one of the most amazing times of my life because like a lot of artists, you artists that are watching this here, you know, I worked for so long trying to break into Marvel. I was sending in my pages all of the time uh, and it was a lifelong dream for me. And I'll never forget getting the call to work for Marvel. For me, it felt like... It felt like being on, you know, X Factor or some show like that. Some, uh, and, you know, I was up for my audition. I'd been on several before. And then by audition, I mean, you know, a portfolio review. And it was, it was C.B. Sabolsky, who's now the editor-in-chief, who, who had the faith in my work and gave me the job. And, you know, it's proved right so far because I've gotten to draw so many books for them. Uh, and it was the week before New York Comic Con that I was given the job and I was over at New York Comic Con the next week and I got to meet my editor and I got to meet Cullen and we started talking about the book and it was so exciting and it wasn't just, you know, me starting on a single book, uh, which a single issue, which can often be the case. They had the... The, the, the faith in me to give me a full series. So I was basically going to be on this Fearless Offenders book till the end, and that's the way it ended up being. It was my first year in Marvel. Uh, it starred Valkyrie and Misty Knight, uh, and we got to create some amazing characters in that run as well. It was like a really bombastic book, which was cool. Uh, and ultimately, after a year of doing it, it led to me working on Spider-Man for a long, long time and an awesome four or five years working on Spider-Man, Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099, Scarlet Spider-Man, Secret Wars Spider-Man. Um, and then basically the, 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 the gang inside in the Star Wars office came along and they stole me and brought me over to to work on Star Wars then, which was which was amazing. So... Any tips for good line art? Yeah, let's go through that now, actually, okay? So your line art is so important. Um, we can, so, so we've been building up these blocks. I'm gonna be able to erase all of these layers. I've got my nice loose, rough, draw, loose drawing here, which I'm gonna draw over, make sure you can see it, of course. Um, so let's just imagine these are my pencils. So now it's time for me to draw over this um, using basically all the inking methods that have been perfected over the last 50 years. My editor inside in Star Wars, um, my editor inside in Star Wars, he's been awesome with me, really working with me and my line weights. And that's really a cool kind of relationship that you can have with your editor as well. So I'm just going to show you here. So if we have a simple circle like this and we have our light source coming down from this direction, okay? A lot of people will know you want to shade in this side, you have your spec, your highlight up here, okay? But it's also just as important to control your line weights to do with something like this, okay? So instead of just drawing a circle, of course circles are a pain to draw, but, when, <laughs> but it, you know, instead of just drawing a circle with a single line weight the same way all, around, all the ways around here, you can show your shade with the line weight too. So I'm going from thin to thick all the ways around, even to the point where, you know, I'm actually missing a bit here and look how much more shape and volume is it within this circle, you know, just from the line without any shading. And I'm gonna take and apply this to all of Tony's armor now. Um, the other thing, to, other parts of line art um, are, when you see, uh, landscape paintings and you see you know the the mountains way off in the background and they start getting less saturated so you can see them less and less well that's another trick that you can do with line art as well because line art is a lot about contrast so when we have a figure in the foreground we want to give that figure a nice thick line as well to pop it from the background and that's our way of showing that it's stronger and cleaner and clearer to see rather than something that's behind it which is that same technique that you might have seen uh, on a painting tutorial okay all right okay let's get to the fun part so here's where i zoom in um here's where i start focusing on the details let's start with the let's leave the head until later um and start inking okay next question do you know you draw like a god <laughs> Um, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Irish people are terrible at taking compliments. 
So please don't send them my way. I'm not going to be able to handle them. My face is going to get redder and redder from the little bit of sunburn that I got today. All right. Now, again, I'm going to be doing this a lot quicker than I would normally do. Um, but look at this. Look, we've built this up. I have all of the information that I need to ink this drawing now. Now it's all about you know, putting in those nice finishing touches. Our light source is going to be up here. So I'm going to have thicker lines on this side of the breastplate than I have up here, okay? So I'm gonna follow that all the way through, and then we're gonna get into that earlier question of how to draw metallic surfaces, because we are flying it for time, 25 minutes gone. This stage, of course, though, takes the longest, but it's so much fun, it's so enjoyable, because you've your hard work done, you've figured out your pose, and now you get to just do some lovely, lovely inking all the way around this figure. Again, this is definitely looser than I would do if I was working on a comic, but it's important for me to get as much of this drawing for you so you can watch this back and back. You know, and if you draw, share your art, put it online. You know, you can find me on social media and share the drawing and I'd love to see it again. You know, comic books is an awesome, nice community. We're all in this together. We're all here because we love comics. And one of the things about loving comics, you know, it kind of genuinely means uh, you're a nice person. So, you know, we're all one big family. So feel free to redraw this, tag me in it and show me it. I'd love to see it. A lot of us are stuck at home at the moment, so it's a good time to be creative. And being creative can really, you know, make you feel good. Okay, another little sculptural tip. This is called chamfering, okay? I'm going to erase these lines and do them again. So this is the edge of the breastplate here. And I'm going to put in a nice little thin line like this. And this is a technique I stole from ZBrush sculptors who basically sculpt digitally in clay. And the reason why we're doing this is that if you're creating a piece of, of metal, you don't want just a perfect 90 degree turn from one part of the metal and then down. You would take a nice little plane and you would just plane off a nice 45 degree angle on it and it just gives a nice you know, smoother edge than what you would have had. It's not as harsh and it looks really nice. It catches reflections. It just adds a level of depth. And that's essentially what we're doing here with the armor. We have our edge of the plate and we have a nice little chamfer with a really thin line here. I'm pressing nice and lightly on the brush and the pen, whatever you're using to get a thinner line. More questions. Any basic advice for someone that's just starting out? Yeah, of course, um, it might seem a little boring, but practice, practice, practice. Um, you are, if you want to work in comics, you're up against people who are practicing all the time. So, you know, when I left college, I had to work in a job, of course. Uh, I was working in an e-learning company, but I really wanted to draw comics. And there's a nice golden rule of how long you should, you know, spend working on comics each day for practicing. And if you're really serious about it, and if you're at that age when you're finished school, which is important, obviously, for this info, you should be putting in at least four or five hours every day. So what I did was I practiced every day. I would get up in the morning, I would draw, I would, you know, on my lunch break, inside and work, I would spend that hour drawing and when I would come home, I would draw them for the other three hours. So uh, I would cut out video games, I cut out soaps and Netflix, not that we had Netflix back then, of course, and I just practice and practice and practice. And that applies all the ways along, all the ways down. You know, obviously, you know, when you're younger, you can't be practicing that much, but you still can draw every day. So if you have a chance, you know, draw a little doodle every day. The more you draw, the better you get. It really is about the hours you put in. There's no, no like secret trick other than that. And the, you know, if you struggle with drawing hands, then get a little notebook 
and just start drawing hands, 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 hands. And by the end of that notebook, you're not going to be just twice as good as the way you were drawing hands. You'll be further along than that because you learn with each drawing. You're focused in and you're studying. You're getting better and better and better. Uh, and then eventually, you know, you will become a master at drawing hands. And like me, you know, I've been drawing Marvel Comics nearly every day for eight years and I'm still learning all of the time. And that's what I absolutely love about it. It would get boring if you stopped learning. Keep drawing, keep learning new stuff. You know, you're leveling up all the time. If this was a video game, you know, it's cool. Like you, you learn something new at your drawing and it's almost like, you know, when you're playing that game, it's like the shine comes along, it's like, vroom, you know, you have leveled up. You know, I, I feel that all the time with my drawing. Like I learn a new technique and I level up and it's just, ah, oh, it's such a good feeling. It's awesome. What other comic book artists inspire me? Oh, so many. Um, you know, I'm not ashamed to say it, you know, I, I look at other people's art all the time and if I see a nice little technique, I will steal it from them. You know, I was actually just drawing today and I was chatting uh, with a good friend of mine, Sean Zaxe, and he he's drawing Fantastic Four right now. Um, and it's cool, like he shares his pages with me and then when he shares the pages, you know, I, I automatically get inspired. And I'm like, I'll see the little techniques that he's doing. And I'll be like, oh, Sean, you know, hey, how did you do that? And we're both kind of trading techniques back and forth all the time, which is great. Uh, inspiration is everywhere in comics. You know, you read a good story and you're sucked up in the story. And it's awesome when you are drawing your comics. You know, I, I look at books, of course, and I, I'm studying the art. You know, I want to see how they drew this, how they rendered the armor. You know, before I was doing this drawing, uh, and I'm not just saying it because he's my boss, uh, but Joe Quesada, you know, he draws incredible reflections on Iron Man. So I just stole from my boss. I looked at Joe's techniques and I'm like, I want to learn that. So I sat down, I looked at it and I practiced it and I got better and better at it. And, you know, that's what you do. You practice, practice, practice then you overtake the people that you're inspired. That's the plan anyway. More questions. Who is my favorite comic book hero that I drew? Ooh, so, you know, like, it's it feels so weird to say it, like, but Spider-Man and Star Wars are my things always. I, like, I loved Spider-Man. And I remember when I got the job at Marvel, you know, I remember saying to a friend of mine, oh, do you think I'll ever get a chance to draw Spidey? Uh, so to have gotten to draw him for so long was just, you know, it is one of the highlights of my life. Like I have got to add an impact to that character's life. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that, you know, whether it's Spider-Man, you know, Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099, you know, like I got to, uh, like there's, there's one question, like what's, what's the most emotional moment that I've been a part of in comics? And I got to tell a story where basically Mary Jane leaves Peter Parker and they don't see each other again for a long time and I remember drawing that and I was like you know whoa this is like this is you know I've, I've come from reading these Spider-Man books you know I love Mary Jane as a character and this is the moment when like she's saying goodbye PD you know uh, and I for the panel I actually it's in the last issue of Superior Spider-Man I think um, and if you ever see that issue uh, I specifically made the panel just as the last one as you see here i wanted it to look like that famous you know hey tiger you've hit the jackpot uh picture and well you know so i i want it was like the beginning and an ending of a book and uh of course she's back now which is awesome but you didn't see her for a long time uh, and when you're you know when you love these characters and you get to draw them then oh it's just it's beautiful Is it enjoyable when drawing when you have the pressure of deadlines? Great question. Uh, yeah, we do, of course. You know, we want to get these comics out to you all of the time. So we always have deadlines. You know, if I showed you my calendar, like for the last eight years, you know, pretty much most days will have me drawing a comic book. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, I adore drawing them. So um, I, I, I've never missed one. Uh, 
in those seven and a half years, I actually don't even, I think I'm always ahead of them. So it's just one of the things that I'm kind of known for. So I still, you know, of course I have the pressure, you know, life throws things at you always. And that's just the way it is. So yeah, there's pressure, but it's all part of it. And it's all good because, you know, you want to bring, you want to get these comics out and you want to show them off to everyone get these stories out there in the world and it's just so gratifying when you do that then okay how are we looking we are getting there and we have 20 minutes left so i'm going to keep the speed up possibly even bring it up a little higher because i want to show you some more techniques for later so I'm quite zoomed in here. We're drawing these lines. So I would always ink like this and then I would zoom out again and that's when I would start adding in my line weights. You know, I have more control when I've zoomed in. I can get these nice little curves which are important for, you know, the organic, ar organic armor that we have for Iron Man. And then, to be honest with you, if I was drawing this for a comic, I would easily spend another hour then just going back in and redoing my line weights. And it's quite therapeutic. It's like a, a coloring book or something. You know, you can switch off and you can just draw your nice, thick, to thin lines. I'll do that a little bit here with the with the ex uh, the external thick line of the character, just to show you, because I want to show as many techniques as possible. Because I'm totally aware that you're gonna. You know, you can rewatch this video and you can learn from it again and again. So I don't want to just be doing the one little trick. Another cool little YouTube feature that you can do as well, because this is super fast. Uh, you can actually click on the settings button, not while it's live now, I believe, but afterwards when it goes back up as a normal video. And you can rewatch this then at like whatever speed you want. You can slow it down to half speed or a quarter speed. Draw along at whatever pace you feel comfortable with. And again, you know, let me see what you've drawn. I have a nice rare name, Will Sliney, so I'm super easy to find on social media. More questions. Uh, what's my favorite comic that I've worked on? Uh-oh. <laughs> Am I going to insult all the, all the other writers? No, I, look, I've loved them all. Uh, the latest one is always the best one for me because it's nice and new you know i'm just i've just started working on the rise of skywalker uh with jody who's who jody hauser who's writing it and her script is amazing and she's like getting to put in all these new scenes that weren't in the movie and you know it's it's she, she's doing an incredible job to do that so me getting to draw those has been so much fun and i'm trying to add in these new kind of techniques so much fun and everyone has had you know uh, such high points. The Rise of Kylo Ren, Ren just felt like such an epic story. Re we really got to add to Ben Solo's story, you know, show things from a whole new side, which was just incredible. It was so powerful getting to do that. And I feel like I've got such a connection with that character and I really care about Ben. So that was amazing. Uh, I worked on Galaxy's Edge then with Ethan Sachs. And like, this does not happen for every comic, right? But I worked on a book, Galaxy's Edge, when Galaxy's Edge didn't exist. You know, it was being built. It's in Disneyland or whatever. And then, you know, it was just the craziest thing ever because, you know, you're working on a place, working on, on drawing this, this place that doesn't exist, knowing that I was eventually going to visit there. And that's what happened before the, the theme park opened. They brought myself and Ethan over to see it. And I was walking around this incredible land that I got to draw on all the panels. And then I kind of figured out that people were walking around with the comic, which a lot of people do, and they're comparing my drawings to the actual place. Uh, luckily, it all held up the stuff that we did. Uh, and like just that experience was amazing. And of course, the Spider-Man stuff, like I've been telling you, and then Fears Defenders being my first ever book. I feel very, very lucky with my career. Okay, so there you go. We're getting there. We've got some line arts. Uh, I'm going to go in now and I'm going to add in some, some weight to the lines. Right now, like it looks a little flat because it doesn't have those thick to thin lines as much as I would like. You know, for sure, 
this line is thinner than this one uh but let's go in and add a little bit more we yeah we were doing we're doing great for time this is awesome do i feel that digital inking has made my actual pen ink skill worse referring primarily to the ability to easily delete or erase lines digitally well i don't know if other digital artists feel this this way at the same time but I'm not kidding you, I will be sitting down at a piece of paper. If I'm at a, con a convention and I'm drawing, you know, I'm sketching a piece, which is often, you know, where I will obviously draw traditionally because it's for someone. And uh, I'll actually try, <laughs> I'll pinch to zoom on the piece of paper. Um, and you're just like, oh, whoa, you know, I, I'm so trained. Like I'm drawing, you know, 10 hours a day, uh, Monday to Friday every week. Uh, so you just become so used to it uh, and I find it weird not being able to zoom in you know now look at me here I'm zooming in and out because uh, I'm quickly looking at where I want the thick lines to be and this is very rough and ready again but you know our light source is coming from here so anything that's on the further side of it will make it a little thicker now I would much prefer to just for every line just to like go in here nice and slowly and be like you know nice and thick to thin but for this example i don't have time but i still want to show you all some line weights so i'm just quickly putting them in as quick as i can just to show the difference this one is actually wrong i've made a mistake but like i said at the start you know mistakes are cool we all make them all of the time you know that's what the your eraser is for that's what your undo buttons for if you're inking traditionally that's what your whiteout is for. We have tons and tons of way to redraw, redraw these things. Where did I get my accent? <laughs> I got my accent from where I live, which is in Ireland. I live in, it's right outside this window over here, but it's, it's getting late here, so you won't be able to see it. But I live in a little fishing village called Ballycotton. There's 400 people here. Um, and yeah, we, we work on Marvel Comics all around the world now. Uh, when I signed my contract uh, many, many years ago, I was brought over with a bunch of other artists and we all got to hang out uh, and like work on our craft together, which was really, really cool and on the Marvel Artist Workshop. Uh, and, like the artists that were there, it was awesome. We had Italian, and Valerio Schiti, we had um, Mahmoud is in Austria, Murazra, who's just awesome. Chris Anka is in California and we've Mike Del Mundo who's in Canada. It was a real multinational contingent. It really doesn't matter where you're where you are. If you're watching this video, you know, wherever you live, if you love drawing and if you would love to draw for Marvel Comics, then I promise you, if you keep practicing, practicing, you dedicate yourself to it, you know, you absolutely can get there because it, all that matters is that your art is good enough because that's what we're going to see. You know, you can share your art now anywhere around in, in anyone around the world will see it straight away. So when I was growing up before the Internet, those dark times, you know, the furthest my art would travel would be onto my mom's fridge. You know, uh, whereas now, you know, I post up a picture and like literally, you know, you, I get these little tweet analytics and like, oh, my God, it's been seen by a million people all around the world. You know, there are millions going to be watching this, you know. Literally everywhere in the world can see your stuff right now. And I promise you, if you've practiced hard enough, it'll show. People will start responding to your art and you'll start growing from there. If you want to work specifically in comics, what's super important is that you, you know, you want to work on your sequential pages. And what that means is, you know, you're not just drawing your pinup image like this. You're, you're drawing pages that tell a story because that's the real skill of, um, of comic books, of comic book artists, it's how you tell a story. You know, you you need to be able to, you know, it's it's just as important to you know you're showing Tony Stark on this cool pose and he's flying through the sky and there's cool buildings in the background or whatever, but you need to be also able to show um, Peter Parker picking up eggs and milk for Aunt May inside in the shop and he's feeling really down because he's had a tough day. So you got to show that emotion. Okay more line weights sun's coming from this way the external so this is going to be a nice thick line here you know underneath it nice and thick see how it's starting to just build up a nice little bit of volume let's put it okay the sun's obviously not underneath his chin but let's put it underneath the and none of these are your shadows these are just line weights so far i'll add in some shadows next 
their its contrasts. This shoulder plate is on top of the arm, so a thicker line over this thinner line underneath is showing that it's a bit more in the foreground. We've got a 2D image. We're trying to represent it as 3D on this 2D flat page. So all of these tricks have been developed by all the great artists over the years. Uh, same thing here, you know, a nice thicker line here than this little chamfer line that we want to have here. I'm actually rotating my body to get the line a nice curve of my arm to draw that line. You know, if I had a bit more time, I would rotate the page. Well, we're going fast here because we have 10 minutes to go. Okay, so let's start showing some metallic reflections and stuff. Okay, next question. How do I deal with work burnout? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's part of every job. Um, you know, I try to, you know, like if I'm, I, I play video games which helps take my mind off work at times, uh, even though, even though like I absolutely adore my job. Like I, I think you can kind of get that from, people get that straight away from when they meet me or they see me drawing. You know, I'm having so much fun here doing this. Uh, but you still, like you're working long hours and it's hard to take your mind off it, you know. Like I was deep in the story of Kylo Ren and all I was thinking about was, you know, cool, I get to design this costume for, for Ben Solo. I get to design like his Jedi outfit, things like that. Uh, which I get to design his Knights of Ren outfit. Uh, and these stuff are, are constantly on your mind. So I'll do things to switch off and get away from it. I'll go for a nice walk, um, which sounds really, really boring, but uh, it can definitely help. I'll, I'll try and stay in touch with my friends. Um, I actually often like chat on Discord with my friends while I'm, while I'm working. There's a few comic book artists and we have like our own little virtual studio, like the good old bullpen uh, back in the day where we're all kind of like laughing and joking with each other because we, we all work from home. Um, and yeah, video games as well, they help me switch off. So, you know, it's nice, it's an it's enjoyable thing to do. Okay, let's start adding in, first let's start adding in some shadows as if this was a clay figure not metallic okay so i'm gonna like rough and ready put this in so your thick black line where you would expect the shadows to be okay so again this is not exactly what i would do when i'm working in comics i would spend a lot more on it but i'm just showing you the shadow cast by the shoulder pad here underneath the head from these little tubes here you know possibly a little bit under the breastplate here behind this little uh, arc reactor there on this side so those are your standard kind of shadows here okay but we want to start adding in so much more because this is reflective so metallic loads of highlights loads of shadows there's your your quick tip okay so let's signify a highlight with just drawing a line where you think that a highlight is. And this line is where, imagine if you were coloring this in, this side would be red, this side would be white. So it's just showing the extreme highlights reflecting the sun that's here, okay? Just like that. And you can really, you know, you can keep on adding them in. Let's have a little fun. More and more specular highlights. Like I was saying earlier, take a look at Joe Quesada. Uh, his Iron Man drawings in particular and like, look at the amount of lines that he has on there and it just works so well. You know, you this thing just pops off the page. It's a nice shiny metallic uh costume so okay so we are getting to the close to the end so I'll get in as much highlights as i can uh look up here now okay this is actually kind of cool so we have a few highlights here and none down none down here so look at the difference that we have you know, straight away, like it's 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 much shinier up here. So let's let's add some more. Let's use a thicker brush and add in more. 
you know we're wrapping around the form i know that's a circular form for the shoulder pads so i'm just indicating that as much as i can remember those little chamfers that we had a while ago well they catch the light so if it's within the shadow the little chamfer that's here catches it and that's a nice little technique that you can use so i'll show you here so so imagine we have a bunch of chamfers like this chamfer it's your word of the day if we've got a word of the day that's what it is today okay we've got a few chamfers all imagine they're all the ways along here okay and we've got a nice little shadow specular line here let's get right back in there and erase the line to show the chamfer catching light and boom look how nice that looks oh yeah really really cool really really cool let's do the same here let's do loads let's keep on adding them in we'll do one more little technique and we got well we have five minutes left I'm pretty happy how much we've got done. Iron Man is tough to draw. Um, the more parts to a costume, they just naturally take longer, you know? Um, but it's still cool. Yeah, so see those chamfers? Like, look at that. That's, that's, that's starting to look nice and shiny and reflective. Um, another cool tip, you know? Remember, remember the way that I drew that circle a while ago? Uh, where it had, it was missing a little bit of line. Well, let's do the same here with the top of Tony's helmet, okay? So let's just erase it. Now imagine you've got the sun beating down on Iron Man. Same here. Let's get all the pieces that reflect in that direction, okay? Mm, yeah, let's really thin down this line here, okay? So when something is really, really reflective and the sun is beating down on it, it's going to spray light out in loads of directions towards you, the viewer. And if you think of that in real life, you know, you might have to squint because there's this bright pinpoint of the, the sun being reflected towards your eyes. So, you know, we can show nice little, boom, shiny little marks like that. Really, really spick and span. <laughs> okay. So we're getting to the end. Uh... I hope you've enjoyed this because I've had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for asking so much questions. Remember, you know, that you can find me all the time on social media. Feel free to ask me questions there as well. No problem. I love seeing all of your drawings. Let's see what else we can fit in here. Speed drawing. I want to get in as much reflections and shadows as I can here because they all add to it. And again, little disclaimer, there is no way I'd go this fast if I was working on my actual comic. Just trying to get in as much as I can to the final image for you. Let's add some little chamfers here. Little shadows, nice and quick, rough and ready. But look at that, it's showing some shape and form, making it look reflective. Boom. Okay. All right. Yeah, so again, thanks everyone. My name is Will Sliney. Um, you can find me, I stream on YouTube now. This is a, a new thing that I think everybody's doing. So I'm doing some art classes there. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, which I think is full, uh, and Instagram, of course. Uh, not on TikTok yet. Uh, I haven't quite make, made that leap yet. Uh, I don't know if I ever will because I can't dance. Uh, but again, you know, thanks for taking part in this. Thank you so much for all of the questions. We're all part of this one awesome kind of a community. So I really, really appreciate it. I can't stop drawing. I can't stop drawing. It's too much fun. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's really, really cool to be part of this community with you all. So I really, really appreciate the questions. And I hope I've shown you a, a few techniques. And I would really love if you practice them. You know, keep on practicing. I promise you, it is not a talent that you're born with. It's a skill that you learn. The more you draw, the better you get. Don't be afraid if you make mistakes. 
Don't get frustrated, we all do that. We've got this blank page in front of us, which is difficult to draw on, but if you practice what you need to draw, I promise you, you'll get better and better and better at it all the time. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm actually gonna be hopping over to Marvel's Instagram. If you wanna catch a, a live stream there right now, I'm gonna be drawing Iron Man. Uh, I'll actually be drawing Tony Stark's face underneath the helmet to show a little, a little bit of that there. And then we'll put the, if we've got time left over, we'll put the face plate on top of that then too. So signing off, thank you so much and we will see you next time. So thank you everybody.